welcome back to another one of my YouTube videos and today it's Guitar Secrets time. Okay, so today we're going to focus on another unsung hero of guitar playing and um, again we're going back into the 80s and again we're going back into the post-punk genre and today we are going to speak uh, about somebody from Newcastle. And some of you might have guessed who that is as the English call people from Newcastle the Geordies. And yeah, today we're going to talk about Geordie Walker, guitarist for Killing Joke. Killing Joke were a very influential 80s post-punk band. They uh, have made impact beyond the genre um, as they were also among the founders of industrial rock or industrial metal or whatever you call it. Um, and they are still relevant today. Jody Walker, their guitar player, is uh, renowned for his uh, innovative guitar playing and he did some really excellent work on the Killing Joke albums, first and foremost on their 1985 release, Nighttime, which uh, features their um, best known song, Love Like Blood, which was a very, very successful single here and in the UK and in many other countries in the world as well. So uh, today I'm going to show you some of the guitar secrets Geordie employed to create all of these cool uh, riffs uh, uh, in the Killing Joke records. Um, and before we start, just a few words on this guitar. This guitar has nothing in common with the guitar Geordie plays. I've chosen it for one simple reason. Geordie tunes down one step. He's in D standard and this guitar is also tuned in D standard. So whenever I speak about chords in the video, uh, you have to bear in mind that the guitar is turned one step down. So uh, like if I fret this chord and play it, um, there's not A minor, it's G minor. And um, well, don't get confused. Uh, always bear in mind the guitar is detuned. All right, so that's that. And now we're going to delve straight into the guitar secrets of Jordy Walker. First thing we're going to take a look at are the note choices of Jordy. Um, he once said in an interview that uh, things like the augmented fourth and the minor seven fascinate him most as um, they have a certain unnerving effect on sand tingles down your spine and everything. And that is why he loves to employ them. Um, I have actually found a good example of him employing these two note choices. Um, the augmented fourth and the minor seventh. He does sit in the title track of the aforementioned album Nighttime, where in the main riff he takes these two notes to spice up um, an otherwise very common chord progression. The chord progression in question is A minor, G major. <laughs> So you see, there's not um, that interesting stuff going on there. Um, so what does he do? He um, takes the augmented fourth in the A minor, which is D sharp. And he takes the um, minor seven in the G major, which is an F. And he takes these two notes, um, yeah, to spice up the whole thing and goes like this. And as if that was not enough, um, he also adds a delay, which repeats every note um, in a time of a 16th. So every note is doubled and the whole thing goes in 16th, which maybe, um, well, adds to that unnerving uh, effect he speaks about. <laughs> And you see that uh, that really spices up the whole figure. Um, he has this dissonant chord here, which resolves to the perfect fifth. Um, it's a power chord after that. And he's got the little chord here. And well, he doesn't resolve that really. But you see um, that these two notes make it really exciting. And the effect with the delay makes it even more exciting. And I think that illustrates the concept Jordi himself has stated pretty well. Another thing which is typical of Jordi are certain intervals he keeps producing with open strings ringing at the same time. For example, this one, or this, or this. And while I'm playing them, you can see um, how they're done. Um, you always have 
a note, an empty string. It doesn't need to be empty, but it can. And then um, a note right next to it in the sense that it's a half step down, half step up, or whole step down, whole step up. And uh, with these uh, l small intervals, uh, he creates a lot of his solos and sometimes riffs. And uh, he does it in 80s, for example. <laughs> where he has this one, this is uh, a C and a D, yeah? So you have a whole step between them. And here you have a G sharp and an A. And you have a half step between them, even more dissonant with all the distortion coming out of the speaker. Um, another example where he does this is the main intro to Fire Dances. <laughs> Um, where he goes, there you have it, half step, and that's a perfect fifth. And there you have it again, the A and the G sharp, and then he takes the whole thing to E major. Um, this is very typical for Jordi, it's even in their biggest hit, Laugh Like Blood. Uh, and here you have it, uh, well, um, not quite in the same, but in a similar manner. You have the D here and the C sharp here, and in between you've got the A. And um, if you call that, you get D major 7, but you have this. Now the major 7 is just below the D. Uh, and the other chord in question is a D, F, F. so that's F additional 9. And but the additional nine is fretted a whole note above the F. And along with the distortion, this creates sounds which are very, very typical for Jordi's guitar playing. Another technique I have found while listening to all my Killing Joke records was that Jordi really employs string skipping quite a lot. String skipping is when you leave out strings between uh, a note and the consecutive note. Um, and Jordi does this for an effect which has to do with the sound different strings produce when you fret a note. Let me demonstrate this. I can uh, fret an A here. <laughs> I can fret the same A here, and as you have might, as you might have noticed, um, these two A's, well, they're the same note, but um, they have different tone to them because this is fretted on a wound string, the low G string, and um, this is fretted on an unwound string, the F, uh, the F string, yeah, um, and whether the string is wound or not, or thick or thin or not, of course, alters the tone. And if we now look um, at the riff for 80s, um, Jody plays it like this. And in the latter part, he leaves out these two strings and plays it just on the... Uh, this one and this one, yeah? Um, why does he do that? Most metal guitar players would do it like that. Um, but then you see the higher note doesn't have this sharp piercing sound. And this is why Jordi um, introduces the string skipping. He did that Quite a lot later, again to prominent effect on the 2003 record, which was just entitled Killing Joke, and the song Blood on Our Hands, which goes something like this. <laughs> And the whole riff is centered um, on these two strings. There are no other strings in this riff, um, just these two. He wants the unwound string to have the high note so that it becomes sharp and piercing. Of course, no tutorial about Jordi is complete without taking a look at his sound. Um, the sound, well, 
it's it's well, it's not enough to say it's recognizable. When you when he plays a note, you know it's him. Um, his setup was very special. He had it customized to his need. The first thing was he uh, didn't play one of the big amplifier brands. Um, he didn't go for Marshall or Fender or Mesa Boogie or whatever. Uh, he went for a very small manufacturer also from the north of England, I think also from Newcastle called Berman Amplifiers. And these amplifiers were tube amplifiers with cascading gain um, in, the, uh, in, the, in the preamp. I'm just looking for the English word for Schaltung. <laughs> um, so um, that was something uh, Mesa Boogie experimented with at the same time. And in England, the Berman amps were dubbed Mesa Killers or boogie killers, because they had this cascading uh, gain in the preamp. Um, and the second thing, Jordi didn't go for 4x12 cabinets. Um, he went for uh, 8x10 cabinets. So he had 8 10-inch speakers in like a enormous cabinet. And he had two of the amps and two of the cabinets because he played in stereo. Um, he did so... Um, because he wanted to create a wall of sound, and there's even more. Um, Jody, he used the slapback echo. You can hear that in my impersonation. Um, he used a, a memory man effects unit for the slapback, and after the slapback, he split the signal and went into two Bell ADTs. Bell ADTs units are sort where you can compare them to a chorus, but they're more. They're automatic double trackers, so they create a second signal as if another guitar player would play along with you exactly the same you're playing. Um, and um, this was, of course, a stereo setup with the two uh, 8x10 cabinets, the two Berman amps, the Memory Man, and the two Bell automatic double trackers. And this created the wall of sound you might have noticed on the Killing Joke recordings. And even more special was his guitar. I mean, a Killing Joke that play hard and heavy music um, and you would expect him to use like a hard or heavy guitar, maybe with a pointy hex stuck like mine. Um, but he didn't. He, he uh, employed a Gibson electric Spanish, like ES, what have you, a jazz guitar. Um, a really big jazz box with, uh, well, um, <laughs> it's not a rock guitar, you know. I'm, I'm always like, if I see him play it, and, and I hear the music, just, well, the image doesn't go with what you hear, but um, him having, having a hollow body guitar really contributed that last bit to his sound. He thought a lot about his sounds, about the equipment which would get him there, and he got really, well, an idiosyncratic sound, which is instantly recognizable when you hear him play. However, uh, I have a Helix preset available. Uh, the download links, of course, is in the comments. Um, so, yeah, that's all. That's my little tutorial about the guitar secrets of Geordie Walker. Um, if you've liked it, maybe you just drop me a like or subscribe to my channel. Um, I would be very, very thankful if you did so. And well, um, till the next video, have fun playing guitar. Meanwhile.